All right, so you want to open the index.html file. And if you take a quick look at it in, in, in Firefox as we test it, again, it, it'll behave the same as before for the user. I can go to Art, PC, Home. The big difference is that now if you go to COM 101, for example, that slides over, and it doesn't have the double nav bar. And it doesn't have the footer because remember when we designed the app in as a wireframe as sketches, I wanted to have a screen that I didn't have a footer and I had that simple back nav bar. We weren't able to accomplish that using the persistent nav bar. And you might think, well, that's a little thing. Yes, but uh, again, you have to think about th things in terms of coding and programming and also design the totality of the app especially if you're going to be the app designer. Yes? Um, I think that our header on the new build is actually broken because it doesn't switch to R to That's true. That's one of the things that we're going to do. It's broken because the JavaScript, I, I said I took out all the JavaScript because that was also dependent on the previous kind of navbar. So now we'll have to edit this. Will we continue to use the actual code the, uh, JavaScript file, or are we just going to put the JavaScript straight into the index? We're going to keep using the JavaScript file, but it's just that it's empty at the moment. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll do a couple of things with this nav bar. Well, first of all, it keeps saying header on every single page. That'll be an easy fix. And secondly, I want it that when I'm in the art screen, I can no longer click the art button. Right now it still behaves like I can click it, even though nothing happens really when I click on it. And so that's, that's a couple of tweaks that I want to do to the nav bar. Um, so let's scroll down to line 20. That's where it simply says header. That's the text that, are, that is appearing on the home screen. So we could write home, but I'm going to use that space actually to write the name of my app. That's one of the quirks also that I noticed of doing it the other way, that it would have put home there but I wanted it to show actually the name of my app on the home screen. So line 20, let's change that to my SDCE. And then also, in order for these buttons to stay active, we need to add a couple of CSS classes. These are built into jQuery Mobile, and the point of them is to make them behave like they are active, that they've been clicked on. This is, again, about user experience. The programming of it is fine, and if I was only a programmer, I'd say, fine, let's move on. But I need to be a programmer and a designer if I'm working on my own app. And the designer in me says, I need to make it obvious that I'm on the home screen or that I'm on the art screen. That's user experience because right now the clues that I have that, I, that I'm on the art screen really are that it says hello art page which we will not have that. We're going to make it say something else. But other clues should be that on the art screen it should say perhaps up here you know something about art classes and also that the button looks like it's been pressed, like it's been used. You see that all the time when you visit websites or when you use apps. If something cannot be used, there's some indication of it so that you don't waste your time clicking on it or that you're not confused, why am I clicking on this and nothing happens? So that's the aspect of user experience, UX, UX design, user experience. So I want to make this uh, the home button, for example, to become active like it's been clicked. And that's going to be a little bit of CSS. And then so let's go to line um, 25. This is where you should see the href that makes the button, makes the link an active button. We've got href, data prefetch, data transition, data icon. 
At the end of data icon, let's add a class. Let's add a class, uh, a class attribute, and we're going to add two, uh, two properties here. One is UI-BTN-Active, space, UI-State-Persist. So UI-something comes from jQuery Mobile. Uh, jQuery actually, but jQuery mobile for all intents and purposes. We've got jQuery mobile, which gives us various abilities that are not built into HTML or CSS, such as uh, data-icon, data-transition. Well, jQuery mobile has a, whole, uh, has a whole list of classes that do different things also, that upgrade your basic CSS or HTML. CSS, pretty much. And so there's a class called UI-Button Active, which makes the button look, look, it, look like it's active. And UI-State Persist, that, makes, that keeps it active. Save it and run it. And what that does is, well, you should confirm that now you've got it saying my SDCE at the top and sim instead of simply header. You should see that the button is active. It's got a color, which we, we can, of course, change later. But now that's better user experience. That makes it active, makes it look like it's been pressed, and is an indicator that I'm on the home screen. There is a space between UI button active and UI state persist. Be careful about that. It's not one long word. There is a space there. All lowercase, of course. Well, that's the good news. The bad news is that if you go over to the art screen, I need to do that there as well. This is the this is the, like I'm saying that the 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 negative the downside of doing the non-persistent navbar. You now have to deal with three versions of the navbar our, for our points, for our purpose right here. That's not so bad. If we had a 40-page document, then I'd be annoyed. But we need to do the same thing for, for the art screen. So let's go find the art screen, the art section. And you're going to see that the art section also has its own, on line 86, has its own header. own header block. So on the header text of heading 1, line 88, let's change that to say art classes. A limitation of the way we were doing it previously also didn't allow us to write very large headers up there because the headers were based on the data title that was in the section. In short, here we have a little bit more leeway to write a longer heading, a longer header. So we'll need to do the same thing then on line 98. We'll need to add again to this href, this a tag, we'll need to add the same class equals UI. I always forget what it is, that's why I'm going to copy and paste. So at the end of line 98, add the class equals UI button active and UI state persist. I always forget them because this stuff is usually consistent except when it's not and then, it, and then you forget. I keep making UI button active and UI button persist but it's a state persist. This is just one of those things you kind of have to memorize by rote unfortunately. So we'll need to do the same thing obviously for the third screen, the PC screen. Find your PC screen, your PC section, change its header, we'll call it PC classes, and then add your class to that link. Mm -hmm. 
So that seems to be online uh, 147. We'll call that PC classes for the header. And then we need to go down to the particular link and add the same class, the same two classes. That seems to be line 162. So I copied and pasted there. I would recommend you get in that habit. If your code works, why rewrite it? If it works, copy it, paste it, you're done faster. Make sure it works the first time, though, because obviously it happens. You write your code wrong, and then you're going to copy and paste it wrong a few times. What's that? 62, because if I'm on the PC screen, I need to make the PC button act. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what's that? Well, I'm just going to make it say something like PC classes. That's what's going to appear on the top of the screen. Um, I'm sorry, before that, before 162, uh, what number is that? It's not the art. It's not the deficit value in there. Well, remember, you don't have to get hung up on exact line numbers as long as the concept works. So let me back up. But I guess you're asking where, what line is it for the art? Yeah, for art. Mine is on line 98, but it's where you're going to see that it says Ahref art in the art section. Go ahead and save and run it. And now, when you go from screen to screen, each screen should stay. Each button on the appropriate screen should stay highlighted. Oh. So, being on the home screen, home is highlighted. Being on art screen, art is highlighted. Being on PC screen, PC is highlighted. Did that work for everyone? We'll do one more thing. Furthermore, for um, user experience. Okay, I get that the button is highlighted, so it gives me a hint that I'm on the art screen. Now, it's obvious, like when you use any other app. But technically, if I'm still using this on a, on a computer where I have a mouse, and I put my mouse on top of it, it's still acting like I can click on it. I don't have to worry about that when eventually it's on a mobile device, because there's no hover on a mobile device. You just tap. But there is a hover on, on desktop. And so we can do one more thing. We can add one more class to also fully make it disabled. Right now, it's, it looks like it's, it's used or disabled, but it's still technically active. You can still click on it. People could still, I guess, be confused. Why doesn't anything happen? I'm clicking on it. Well, we can disable the button with one more class. Question? What happens if you click on PC? It goes to PC and it stays highlighted. You didn't change the proper class. Remember, on each one of these screens, you have three copies of the nav bar. So if you go to the PC section and add that class to the home button, you're going to make the home active instead of the PC button active. I'll check yours in a moment, but let's add this next code here. Let's back up to line uh, 98. Line 98 is where, oh no, let's go a little back further, the home screen. Where's the home screen? Home button. There it is, line, uh, t let's start with line 25. Let's start again. Let's go back to the home section so we can edit the home button. It says UI button active, UI state persist. There's one more class that we can add to also deactivate the button so it doesn't con confuse people that it's no longer clickable. So at the end of that class, insti still inside the quotes, add a space after state persist. And now we need UI-state-disabled. Dash 
25. So the button will be active, it'll stay active, and actually it'll be disabled, so you can't click on it anymore. And that, again, is going toward having good user experience. Love them or hate them, and the popular consensus seems to be that they've lost their magic touch a bit. Traditionally, for a long time, Apple had one of the highest user experience positive ratings that their interfaces look nice and all of the little nuances that went into it and the feedback and such and consensus seems to be that over the last few versions of the operating system they've kind of gotten a little rough around the edges but if you still think about it in terms of do you like using your mobile device or do the icons look weird and does do the transitions annoy you all of that means it's bad user experience. If you like using your phone, if you like the swipe and the scroll and all of that, someone thought of that to make it feel nice and have a good experience. This is part of that. Question? It doesn't seem to change the, the way the page functions. It seems to be exactly the same as well. The functionality should be the same, but notice now this is no longer an active clickable link. <clears throat> it's a subtle thing. Yes, but these subtle things, these little things add up. I think I say that the color is like, you know, a little bit lighter than the one, the previous one. It's also lighter, like it's faded out, like it's deactivated. Yeah. So we'll need to do the same thing for the art screen and the PC screen. We'll need to add the same class to art and PC. So you try that on your own for a moment. See if you get that to work, and then we'll move on. for everyone. So just to test it on the home screen, home is deactivated. Go to art screen, art is deactivated, and go to PC, PC is deactivated. Eventually, of course, we'll edit the colors. We're going to get tired of these colors. You may already be tired of them. We're going to edit these colors, of course, a little later. All right, so... Um, what we should do is, uh, well, that footer still says footer. It's not too useful. It should say something more meaningful, perhaps. Um, so again, we've got three versions of it, three copies of it on each section. So let's back up to find the footer in the home section, which should be line 61. Line 61 is where we've got our footer. And what we'll do is we will add copyright 2015. But I want to add the copyright symbol. I think I mentioned it briefly in this class. 
Does anyone remember or does anyone know? How do we add the copyright symbol? The ampersand. The ampersand? The ampersand symbol and then? Not yet. Semicolon? Nope, not yet. Copy and then semicolon. So ampersand, copy, semicolon. That creates a copyright symbol. And we can look up all of the possible symbols because we can also do, for fun here at the end, hearts. What do you think that will do? Well, we can also do yen. We can do euro. We can do even e acute. So there's a bunch of special characters that we can access with their proper HTML entity. And uh, we can also, we have a variety of, of, of symbols and graphics. We, I don't have them all memorized. These are just some off the top of my head. Some of them have a, have a simple name that we can remember, and some of them have a code number. Because not all of them have a name, but they all have a code number. And then we can even, we can even look up What's the code numbers and such for emoji? The modern language of the internet. We can get emoji characters and we can put them into our into our apps. But just for fun, I added those symbols. And so we've got copy is the copyright. Hearts is the heart. Yen, euro. And the E acute is the E with the little accent symbol. Definitely. Uh, you would you would use a href if it was going to be a link, but you would be able to add an image there. You can add images in the footers and the headers, and it'll pretty much format it pretty well for you automatically too. Okay, so I need to do the same thing for my art and PC screens, or if you want to, you can put something else down on the footer but I'm going to put the same copyright notice on the art and the PC screen. So find your, your footers in the art and PC sections and just replace the plain old footer with the copyright notice. Okay, so I want to add <coughs> that pop-up screen that I mentioned. I want a pop-up to happen to show me information about the college and uh, other other things like the uh, the the directions that turn by turn directions. We'll actually be able to touch on that today. So the functionality of that is that I, that's going to be, I think, my screen C. Screen A is this main one with, with headers. Screen B is the one that is like this. That's just a simple basic header. And screen C is a pop-up that's going to pop up, make everything else fade out, and it has its own content. So let's back up first. 
uh, to our home screen at line 52. At line 52, we've got this grid that is our placeholder to give us two columns, block A and block B. So in block A, line 54, I'm going to add a new button there. We'll call it about. In, a, in order for this to be a button, we'll wrap the A tags around it. So the A tags. Because it's an A tag, it's going to get an href to take us somewhere. And because we want it to look like a real button, we'll need to add the usual data roll button, data icon, data transition, etc. So let's say href pound about. That should make sense that when I click this, it goes to a screen called about. I don't have one currently in existence, but I'm looking ahead and I kind of know what I want. So that button won't work yet because there's no about screen, but it will eventually. And speaking of a button, well, I want it to behave like a button. Data roll button. And I want an icon. Data dash icon equals uh, info. There's a little icon, like an info. It represents information. We want this to animate. <clears throat> What's the code for animation? Close. Data transition. And I know that one that works well for pop-ups is called pop. P-O-P. -O -P. So when I click on this button, it will open an about screen and it will pop into view. Go ahead and save it and run it, and it should look like an icon. Or a button, that is. It should have an icon. If you click it, nothing happens yet. But we need to create our about screen in just a moment. An about button doesn't do anything yet. That's the code so far. So the button is our trigger to load the about page. We don't have an about page. Let's create it. Um, that'll be a new section. We can edit anywhere we want. But usually I keep the large sections of the app grouped together and then subsections grouped together. So the large sections would be, in our case here, Home Art PC. Subsections would be COM 101, 201, etc. And then another subsection would be this pop-up. So at the very end of our document, scroll down to the end of the document. I can see this section of advanced computers, section of intermediate computers, and basic computers. Those are my subsections. Which is hard and 
that that could work as well if the if the right code applies. For example, when we had a side, remember that side panel? That aside is, was part of the uh, art page. See, there's header, article, and then aside. So in that case, I could have that aside tag there, which is near my main section. Um, this other one, because it can be a pop-up that can be reused for different pages, it doesn't exactly uh, apply, in a sense, to one section. It can be reused. But both ways that we can do this, or there's many ways to do this, they'll work as long as it works uh, for yourself. We could, we could do the same thing, you know, putting these sections near a particular uh, section, and as long as it works, it's just really how we want to do it and keep it together in our minds. Less coding, yeah, if possible. Like, the less coding was that persistent nav bar, but it wasn't doing what I wanted. So I have to do more coding, but then it does what I want. Okay, so let's say after line 234, let's give yourself a new line 235. We need a new section here. So let's create a new section on line 235 and 237. It needs a pair, of course. It needs a data role of page. And it needs an ID. What's, what should our ID be? About. We've already said we're looking for the about uh, link on the button we created. You should name the same thing here or else it won't work. And remember, you don't put the pound symbol here, only on the href. Since it's a complete section, I can add a, a header here. So I want it to have a little header bar at the top. This pop-up box, I want it to have a header. It doesn't need one, but it'll look nice with a header, which of course needs a data role of what? What data roles do my headers need? Trick question. Header. The data, the header needs a data role of header. I want some text up there, heading one. So again, this this is not new. Let me, let me let you catch up there. So creating a section, creating a header, adding text to the header. We've done all of that before. Well, after the header, we need the content, which is article. That's the one that I'm still memorizing. Role equals main, and class equals ui-content. So this is where the main content will appear. So here you've got a class, a jQuery mobile element, ui-content, and so this will behave, the article will behave, it'll look a certain way through this predefined class, which if we want to, we can redefine later. Yes. Um, do we have any uh, other classes besides the UI content for the main 
<laughs> we do, and actually we're gonna we're gonna come back to the jQuery mobile website uh, over on the API documentation screen. There's a nice list of all of them. I'm just putting just some gibberish in the article. I want to see how it works so far. Save it and run it, and at this point it should work that you click your button on the home screen, and then a new screen loads up, the About screen. We're not quite done yet. Let's see how it works so far. Alright, so my home screen has an About button. I'm going to click that, and I get the brand new About screen. There was a little bit of a pop animation. It's not looking like a pop-up yet, and actually I'm kind of stuck here. There's nothing to click on. I need to fix that as well. But if I do press back on the browser, it goes back. So at least it's kind of working. I need to then make it act like a dialog box. So that just requires a little bit of a change on your section. It's got a data role of page. We're going to add one more attribute here. This one is only important for, for dialog boxes. Data-dialog equals true. Now save it and run it. And with that simple attribute there, a lot happens. The background fades out this pop-up box will appear in the center of the screen with a close button and functionality and all because of just adding data dialog true and that all happens because of jQuery mobile again coming back to it over and over a lot of these things happen because of jQuery mobile <clears throat> the framework has these shortcuts that we could program this ourselves from scratch and write 40 lines of code or we can write one command in a sense and jQuery mobile does all the hard work for us. jQuery Mobile is not the only framework that does this. There are competing ones like Ionic and uh, Angular JS and one from Intel that I don't remember its name and even one from Microsoft I think. They've all got a framework, a way to do this. But jQuery Mobile is one of the big popular ones. So let's see if that worked. Click about, pop up. Everything fades out, little glow around it, little close box or close button. Come back. Mr. Yeah. You know, on the article, you, you, you don't need a backslash to close the article? Oh, yes, I do. Good eye. I didn't close it. It did work, but I didn't close it. Yes, good point. So we've closed it everywhere else. I forgot to close it. It still worked. Um, so I, I always keep scaring you that one wrong character could break your whole app. Um, but sometimes you're okay. But I'd rather scare you into typing it all right than be lax. I was just wondering why it was. To some degree, the web browsers are, are lenient in their interpretation of the code. But we want to write it as properly as possible always because technically this was okay let's start a new article because we never closed it but it visually it seemed to work I, maybe if we loaded up the console we would have had error messages but visually it seemed to have worked did that work for everyone line 235 yeah um, not exactly, no. Um, we've just been doing it over and over that we add ID at the end so that we can always find it when we're looking for it. And we're usually adding data role first to, to define what, this, what that first tag does. 
and then that left well in the middle. So then I added data dialog right there. But it didn't really need to be in any order there. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Right now our dialog box is a bit Spartan, a bit basic. I want to add a picture there, maybe a little bit better text, and then we'll go on. So we're going to go borrow some pictures again from the college's website. There's a few other ones that I found. Let's go to the college's website, sdce.edu. And um, many organizations provide a media kit, which is approved graphics and text for the media. So if a news organization wants to write about the college and wants the official <coughs> logo of the college, there's a media kit for that. Uh, almost every organization provides that. You can go get the Twitter media kit that tells you exactly the Twitter color, the exactly the blue Twitter color. You can get the media kit for Facebook, the exact blue for Facebook. So we have one here for the college. It's kind of hidden, however. Uh, here on the homepage, sdce.edu, scroll down to the mission. There's a mission statement here, and then click Read More. Click on mission, uh, click on read more in the mission, in the footer. And then we will see, they call it style guide and logos. On the left nav bar, then find style guide and logos. On this screen, we can also take some text here and there, official text. But let's go to the style guide and logos. Did you go to sdce.edu? And then at the very bottom you'll have mission and then read more. <coughs> Question? Oh, there's another way to through the box menu. Okay. Oh, okay. That's another way there. Thank you. If you go to the organization, let's try it this way then. Organization menu and then style guide. So we've got some pictures here. This horizontal ones and then this vertical one. I want to use that vertical one in the in that pop-up box. So we have two two versions, a PNG version and an EPS version. EPS is usually for print, so we don't want those for our apps. We want the PNG, the ping version. So you should, uh, I suppose, just right-click that link to the ping. Save link as. I'm going to save that link as, and let's save it in our project. So find your project folder. So in your project folder, in the mobile website folder, in the images folder. We've got a folder there waiting for images. And then ignore the uh, icons ping and icon SVG. You're going to save that picture, and it's called CE Logo Vert. We can change its name, but we don't need to. So we're saving the, the vertical, the continuing education logo vertical version, the ping version. Save it to your project. And we'll get back to Notepad, and we'll add this picture to our pop-up screen. What is the name? How does the name say different? Vertex B W. Huh. Not vert dot EPS. Does it at least that it does it at least end in PNG? Yeah, yeah, it does end in PNG. But... Okay, I think you'll be fine if it says some other name, but it ends in PNG. We'll be fine because it's at least a graphic. 
but mine's the same thing, the same one as this. Hmm. Okay, let's see what happens on the next step here when we add it to our project. Okay, so I'm saving it into my images folder. Let's go back to Notepad. Line 240, I have some gibberish, but instead I want to add the picture. I'm going to, I'm going to if you have gibberish on line 40 also, just clear that out. And we'll use the, the image tag, remember that, IMG. I'm going to display an image here. It needs a source, so SRC equals. And on mine, it's ce-logo-vert.png. But I put it in a folder, didn't I? Mm -hmm. My index file is on the root level of my project, and my image is in an images folder. So that would be a broken path. It, that there's no logo vert ping file on the same level as my HTML file. It's in a subfolder. So I would call the images folder I would reference the images folder slash and then the the, the name of the graphic ce logo vert dot ping yes what's time the next item to the html to the images folder nothing it's sort of tied to it on a knee, uh, on a case by case as needed basis we need this picture right now so we're referring to that folder and then the picture because it's all together in the top folder october 1st then it's all kind of tied together that way but there's no connection unless we explicitly say it like that so this is recognizing it anywhere no, it's just on this folder because this HTML file is in this folder. So you see over here. Yeah, I understand that they're all in that folder. I just don't quite understand that. So the folder was something that would be like what's the call in there. But is it a whole open image in the home or like the first? We have a reference here to a to a local folder. The folder is is relative to where the index file is so HTML just assumes if you start writing something like this it assumes there must be a folder within the same folder called images if there was a folder somewhere else then yes we'd have to type the whole path you know the C drive slash users slash Victor slash my project then we'd have to type the whole path to it but this what we have right there is technically a relative path. This right here, simply images, is a relative path. This is relative to the current HTML file. All right, let's see if that works. Save it and run it. And when you open the about, you have a picture. It's not looking exactly how I want, but that's where CSS will come in in a moment. So if at least it shows up here, good, we'll take a break. When we come back, I want it centered and other CSS styling. But uh, if it works at this point, great. Let's take a break. It's 7.08. We're back at 7.18. And we'll fix it up a bit with CSS.